Hey everybody, welcome back. I am the Gerbil, and this video is gonna be a comprehensive overview of Admiral Raddus, his kit, his team, how to use them, how to mod them, and a bit of theory crafting at the end. And I have to say, I am stoked. I think this is gonna be one of the best GAC defensive teams going forward. I'll explain why, stick with me. I think I'm gonna blow your mind here. Uh, all right, so who is Adrad? First off, he's a light side support rebel Rogue One leader. And if you didn't read the developer insight, there's a, a statement about him being the best fleet commander the rebels had, which Akbar may disagree, but that's also a clue. Watch my other videos. I guarantee you the Radis, not the Radis, the Profundity is inbound, which was his ship in Rogue One. Uh, all right, let, let's, let's dive into this, shall we? So Admiral Raddus provides speed boost, protection, revives, and exposed synergy. He is primarily going to be a defensive character, but it has some really interesting offensive abilities. Now here's the squad I think is essential. Starting out, you've got to have Jyn Erzo. His kit calls her out multiple times. In fact, she's invincible as long as he's alive. She has an AoE that revives other rebels, including Raddus if he goes down. She can pass 100% turn meter to somebody, and she stuns and removes turn meter from the enemies on a cooldown of two, no less. Now Cassian and K2 come together, and I'm gonna go into detail and depth about this in a second, so I'm not gonna read all that, but I think that they are essential in this kit, especially for a defensive team. Now, if you're wanting to go offense, I think Biston is probably your best attacker. He actually has the highest damage output of any of the Rogue One, which is not saying much because Rogue One tends not to do much damage, but Radis is gonna fix that, and I'll explain why. Uh, finally, we've got Rebel Scarif Pathfinder, who I think if you're gonna place on defense, this is your guy. Now, you're probably thinking, but what about the others? Well, Pow is taken from Mon Mothma. <laughs> Baze and Chirrut are way better with uh, Akbar right now under his Omicron leadership, and Bodhi just no. All right, no. All right, let's look at Radis's kit real quick because here's where things actually start to come together at a, at a potentially epic level. I mean, totally game changing for this. Um, deal special damage to target enemy, and the weakest ally gains protection up 20%. What does that mean? Well, weakest ally is often misunderstood. It is health plus protection at that moment. Now this is very important because it means that your, your, your tanks like K2 and Pathfinder, as they take damage, they will eventually become the weakest ally, which means that Radis's basic is going to be pushing them back up, making them stronger to survive and tank longer. Also bonus protection. This is misunderstood as well. Bonus protection is not based on your protection. It is a percentage of your max health at the start of the battle. So here's where the, they all line up. You can see that Jin and Chirrut at the end are actually really, really weak, whereas the top two tanks are, of course, K2 and Pathfinder. In fact, Pathfinder, unmodded, has a base health and protection of 96,800 life. Now this is, this is gonna get astronomically insane in a second. Okay, so next we got Radis's inspiring maneuver. I'm so inspired. All right, all rebels are gonna gain protection up. That's 50% of their health. Keep that in mind. Uh, for two turns, they're gonna recover protection, which is great. All tanks are gonna taunt, and then all allies that are Rogue One gain this spark of the rebellion. Now skip down a bit. Okay. Um, what is this? Spark of the Rebellion is going to give all your, your Rebel One, Rebel Rogue One allies 40% offense and 30% speed. There's some great text that's interesting, but I'm not going to discuss it. Uh, it's very specific, only if you're fighting Empire. If Spark of the Rebellion is dispelled, now I don't know yet if that just includes it expiring or if it is dispelled by an enemy. I'm thinking it's like, poof, by the enemies, but we'll find out. Uh, if it is dispelled, that ally is going to gain 40% turn meter and another 50% bonus protection. Holy heck fire. This is going to mostly help your tanks though, because that bonus protection is based on your your health, right? So this means that when, when Adrad says inspiring maneuver, right, K2 and Pathfinder are each going to instantly gain over 20,000 health, uh, or protection rather. Um, again, Baze is going to get a bunch. Bodhi, surprisingly, is going to get a lot, but again, no, no. All right, Blue Squadron Air Support. This is pretty cool. Uh, dispel all debuffs on all light side allies. Light side, that is not limited to Rebel or even Rogue One. 
you can put anybody you want in here right now and it's gonna cleanse them, which is pretty cool and important. I'll show you in a moment. Then deal special damage to all enemies, who cares? Radis, if he's in the leader slot, you get some upload, don't care. That just leads you to hope. All right, moving on. Uh, transmission from Scarif, special, unique. Um, this one is interesting. This is where he gets hope. Uh, it's a static ability. Um, first off, Radis himself gains 40% tenacity and 30% defense. His kit is also posted now on SWGOH. You can go check it out. Um, but here, here's where Jen Urza gets called out. If Jen is an ally, she gains Spark of the Rebellion at the start of the encounter. That's plus 30 speed. That's plus 40 offense. That's a lot of stuff. Um, and then, uh, let's see, at the start of the encounter, uh, when Jen loses Spark, she gains Spark. So <laughs> she's never going to lose it, basically. Also, Jen can't be defeated. Like we said, she is invincible as long as Adrad is on the board. A um, bunch of blue stuff all about uploads. Don't worry, you're going to get it if you're running a full squad. I have no doubt you'll hit it. Uh, it activates hope. Hope is a one-time ability. One-time ability only, sadly. But it revives all allies. All. It does not say all rebels. It does not say all light side. It does not say all rogue one. It is all allies at 100% health and protection. Then deal true damage to all all enemies and inflict protection disruption healing immunity for four turns so they're going to lose all protection they cannot heal and it's for four turns this dispels bonus protection uh normal protection i, I could be wrong about the bonus i'm pretty sure it does though they basically just become uh like vulnerable right um now what what i'm really curious though is does that affect the gl because if, if, if a GL cannot, if they lose all their protection and they cannot heal, and we have this circular defense that I'm going to get to in a second, I think that this team very well could go against a couple of GLs now. Even if you don't need to heal or revive anybody, this is worth it just to eliminate all healing and protection. And it can't be dispelled. It can't be evaded. It can't be resisted. It's like smack. You're it. Oh, man. This is, this is great. Okay, so here's where things really start to get interesting. The leadership ability. So what does Adrad do? Well, I've grayed out some stuff that's it's case specific, so I'm not too worried about it. Mostly affects Empire. And uh, there's some Omicron information here, which is awesome. But hang on, we'll get to that. So for each Rogue One ally, each Rogue One ally, at the start of the battle, Rogue One allies will gain 10% health and other stats. Now, that says each, which means that if you have a squad of five, all five, that means they will each get 50% health, 60% potency, 40 speed, and another 60% tenacity. This, this is epic. This is huge. Um, let's, let's move on. If a Rogue One ally is critically hit by an enemy, then that enemy gains exposed. Now, you were probably thinking why K2 and not bit. Uh, uh, well, actually, it works It works for either one, Bayes, I guess, because he gets Retribution, but so does K2. So here's the way it works. A, you do not want crit avoidance mods on your tanks. You actually want your tanks to get hit, and you want them to be critically hit. Because uh, your opponent hits you, they get a crit hit, they get inflicted with Expose, K2 or Bayes counterattack, that hits them lightly on the shoulders, no damage really, but because they were exposed, they take 20% max health damage immediately. So this is why uh, the leadership gives so much bonus health, why Spark Rebellion gives bonus protection, why his basic gives bonus protection up, and there's some more, but you want to be hit. You want exposed, you want counterattack, 20% health damage. You only have to do that five or six times to kill an enemy. And then, of course, yeah, your tanks are going to start to go down eventually, but that's why Jin goes revive, and that's why Jin can't be defeated until Radis is dead. So you got to get through multiple walls here. This is going to be really, really, really interesting. Now, that, that Omicron means that they all start with an additional 40% protection on top of that 50% health. And they gain Spark of the Rebellion, which gives them more offense, which doesn't really matter for this team because they don't hit worth a darn anyway. But it gives them a 30% or 30 more speed. And then whenever they attack, they will recover 20% health and protection. So you want them to be hit, apply expose, counterattack, 
negate the exposed 20% health damage and then recover 20% health and protection on their own. See what happens here? This is a this team wins by defensive attacks. It, it is really really cool. Um, so if we if we look at how the Radis effect pans out across the the team, okay. So here we got Jin, Cassian, K2, Biston, and Pathfinder, and these are their base starting stats. This is before any mods are applied. Now remember, with mods, you can you can apply you know bonus 24% protection on the triangle, on the, the cross, on the circle, I think it is, and even on the arrow, but or 16% health for each of those. So if you did 16% health, for example, uh, K2SO, for example, has 41,000 health. You can provide an additional, let's see here, almost 100% protection, you could double that, or an additional 64% health. Now that's, that's gonna be after um, all of these leadership things too. So if, if we apply the leadership one, again, this is no modding, just, just leadership, you can see here the all of those bonuses in effect. So Jenner's is picking up 16,000 health, um, but the biggest effects, of course, will be on the people with the most life. But now you can also see the speed. Jen is already among the fastest characters in the game. Now with this leadership, she's gonna start with a base speed unmodded at 223. Also notice Cassian, K2, Biston, and Pathfinder all will start the match over 100% tenacity and potency already without any mods they are already over 100% tenacity and protection or potency sorry now if we add the omicron they're each going to pick up 40% more protection so now k2 is sitting on 129,000 starting health and protection and pathfinder is already up to 141,000 before bonus protection before mods. Now, if we add Spark of the Rebellion in there, they pick up another 30% speed. So at the start of the match, Jen Urza pre-mod is now 253 speed. Now, if you're gonna relic her and you're gonna actually run this team, you're gonna wanna throw on another plus 100 to 130 speed, which is very realistic. And you can push her up to 400 speed, honestly, if you want it. It's, I wouldn't go that high, but I have 120 bonus speed of mine, so she's gonna be at almost 380 speed. And that is insane. Now her AOE is also gonna pass off turn meter, so this way you can guarantee no matter who you put on the, the team, whether it's a rogue one or not, she can make sure somebody else goes second. She will go first, and then whoever you want goes second. Now also keep in mind, Radis's abilities, his basics is going to provide bonus protection. Inspiring moves is going to give everybody 50% bonus protection. That's on top of, of these leadership bonuses. So, I mean, that's that's going to be 31,000 bonus protection for K2, for example. And then Spark of the Rebellion, if it's dispelled, you get a million things. And if you got the Omicron, they get critical chance up, critical damage up, defense up, health up, up, offense up, potency up, and 20% more bonus protection. I mean, this is just bonus protection everywhere. So how does this actually work individually now with each character? Um, this is the most interesting one. Jin cannot be defeated as long as Radis is alive. If Radis dies, Jin can revive him. So we have a crisscrossing protection mechanic here. And of course, if somehow everybody dies but him, uh, he can hopefully revive everyone at 100 protection health and potency or protection. Now, Jin's abilities, her truncheon strike removes 100% turn meter from the target and stuns them if it's a crit hit. Now, think about the crit hit. Rebel Counter Strike is an AOE. For each critical hit, it will revive a defeated rebel ally. That means she needs lots of crit chance. Crit chance, crit chance. You want crit chance triangle, crit chance uh, set, and I would go speed. Radis doesn't give any crit chance up, so she needs that crit chance. All right, next we're gonna look at K2 and Cassian. So Cassian is gonna start with a bonus or a base of 106 potency. Nonetheless, I still recommend you put a potency uh, set on him with speed. That's because his shot grenade, it's an AOE, it will apply five debuffs randomly to targets, but that does include speed down and ability block and healing immunity. Now, for each buff or debuff on an enemy, he'll gain 20, well, rather, for each uh, debuffed enemy, when he does this, he'll gain 20% turn meter. Hopefully, that's all five enemies, which means he immediately would take an extra turn doing crippling shot. And what this will do is it will look at the board and take every debuff on enemies 
and copy it onto the target enemy. So you, you can basically apply ability block, healing down, offense down, speed down, uh, and defense down on a target of your choice. So you want that potency to make sure this stuff like lands. Now he's got a static ability that at the start of battle gives everybody 20% protection up. So again, if you're thinking back to K2 and Pathfinder, they're already starting with, um, after you mod them, close to 100,000 health, which this means you're gonna give them another 20,000 protection, minimum. All right, and of course, there's some synergies with K2. Whenever he does uh, his shot grenade, K2 will assist. Now, as for K2, K2's basic is going to apply uh, offense down, and K2 is gonna be counterattacking a lot. So this reduces the damage that they will tank, while at the same time, Adrad is making them a whole lot more tankier and buffier. So um, his special is going to play Daze, who really cares? Then he's going to taunt whenever he uses an ability. But here's where he gets that 97% that counterattack. And this is only as long as he's not debuffed. But he is pre-modded. He will start with 111 tenacity now. So add some tenacity on top of that if you want. Get him up to 150, 180% tenacity. It's going to be hard to buff, debuff him. And he'll be counterattacking. So he'll be getting hit, applying expos. Uh, counterattacking, recovering 20% health and protection while also gaining 1% max protection. Um, it's not a lot, but this is going to, I think, could really, really add up. And of course, when he does his special, Andor will assist. Uh, next up, Biston, he's going to start the battle at 108% base potency. This is really important because his basic inflicts damage over time. Uh, his frenzy ability is going to grant the whole turn team turn meter, which is nice. But then his gunner tactic, which is the number one hardest hitting attack in the Rogue One squadron, uh, it also will remove turn meter on the target equal to his own potency, which is already over 100%. So it's a, it should remove all turn meter from the target enemy. So combine that with, with careful targeting from Cassian and Jen, and you can very, very, very carefully control the flow of the match. Uh, his static doesn't matter anymore. Now, Pathfinder, here we go, 100, 141,000 starting. Cassian is gonna give prote bonus protection on top of that. Radis is gonna give it on top of that. This guy, I mean, you should have no problem getting him up to the 250, maybe 300,000 health pool starting this matchup if you mod him right. The only thing that's really worth noting here is that his path allows him to self-revive if he has any buffs when he's defeated. So this means you want to mod him up for health, 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 because he revives at 20 or 15% of his max health. And then the bonus protection, of course, that he gets from Radis will be through his health, not his protection. So how does this really pan out? Um, take out one character who you want. I would suggest Biston or Cassian, but probably Biston. And it basically Basically, Skyrim right, works like this. Um, the tanks are going to defend Radis, and Radis is going to keep Jin invincible. And if the tanks go down and or Radis goes down, Jin is going to revive them both, and you have to go through them again. Cassian, of course... Uh, oh, yep, there's some cute animation. Cassian, of course, is going to also um, have synergies with K2. They're going to help each other out, assist a bit, no big whoop. Um, and then Biston is your big tacker. Now, theory crafting. Here's where this is really crazy cool. Let's start off with non-Rogue One. So we throw in Galactic Luke and Tank uh, tank Tech from Watt. This means Luke's going to be auto-taunting, so he's going to control the board from, from the get-go. Um, so first off, you got to get through his protection and or remove his taunt. Then you got to get through a possibly 300,000 life self-reviving tank. Then you got to get through Radis in order to defeat the invincible Jin Urza, who could revive Radis, who could, through hope, revive everybody, and this whole thing starts. So you have to get through a galactic legend and a super beef beefy reviving tank to get through the leader to kill Jin Urza, who could just start the whole train all over again. I think this, I think this could time out so many teams and I am so looking forward to trying it. Hey, I hope this video was helpful. If you all think it was, hit that like and subscribe, please. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I will see you on the hollow tables, hopefully with a Relic 7 Adrad very soon. All right, bye-bye.